William Shakespeare is widely regarded as the greatest writer in the English language and the world's preeminent dramatist. He is often called England's national poet and nicknamed the Bard of Avon. He wrote 38 plays, 154 sonnets, two long narrative poems and a few other verses. His plays have been translated into every major living language and are performed more often than those of any other playwright. William Shakespeare was born on the 26th of April 1564 in Stratford-upon-Avon. His father was a successful local businessman and his mother was the daughter of a landowner. Shakespeare married Anne Hathaway at the age of 18. She was eight years older than him. They had three children, Susanna and twins Hamnet and Judith. Between 1585 and 1592, he began a successful career in London as an actor, writer and part owner of a playing company called Lord Chamberlain's Men, later known as the King's Men. Shakespeare produced most of his known work between 1589 and 1613. His early plays were mainly comedies, such like A Midsummer Night's Dream, and histories Henry V, Julius Caesar. And these works are regarded as some of the best work produced in these genres. He then wrote mainly tragedies until about 1608, including Hamlet, Othello, King Lear and Macbeth, considered some of the finest works in the English language. In his last phase, he wrote tragic comedies, The Merchant of Venice, also known as Romances, and collaborated with many other playwrights. Shakespeare's plays remain highly popular today and are constantly studied, performed and reinterpreted in diverse cultural and political contexts throughout the world as the themes and issues presented still have relevance. Shakespeare retired to Stratford around 1613 at the age of 49, where he died three years later. Macbeth is the shortest of Shakespeare's tragedies and the intensity is still enjoyed in theatres today. Ambition, evil, bloodshed and violence create a powerful atmosphere and Roman Polanski's film, though now dated, is a useful, accurate interpretation of the play. The Elizabethan age took place from 1558 to 1603, named after Queen Elizabeth I of England and is considered by many historians to be the golden age in English history. During this era, England experienced peace and prosperity, while the arts flourished particularly in music and drama. Musical literacy was expected in the upper class of society. Many Elizabethans made their own music using the lute, viola, recorder, bagpipe and the fiddle. Drama was at the high peak of its cultural achievement for all time. There were a variety of plays including action, humour, violence and plays with musical interludes. This period witnessed the first entertainment industry, especially in theatre. Although the first performances were done in the courtyards of large inns, the very first public theatre in London was built in 1576. Theatres were mostly to be found in London, near the court. However, plays were attended by all the people, with the audience reflecting society from the lowest to the highest level. A constant demand for entertainment led London companies to take minor performances like folk players, puppeteers and acrobats on the road. Plagues devastated Elizabethan England. The plagues often interrupted the run of plays and even closed down theatres, making road performances necessary. They were a constant threat to the people and the land, the most devastating being the bubonic plague, where almost 25 million people died in Europe and 100,000 in London. As previously mentioned, Macbeth is one of Shakespeare's most famous tragedies, and it is important that you have an understanding of what the key elements of tragedy are. 
tragic hero. A main character cursed by fate and possessed of a tragic flaw, for example, Macbeth. A struggle between good and evil. This struggle can take place as part of the plot or exist within the main character. Macbeth, the witches, Lady Macbeth and Macduff. Hermasha, a fatal character flaw of the tragic hero. In Macbeth's case, he's ambitious, which is not always a bad thing, but also morally weak, for example. Tragic waste. The good being destroyed along with the bad at the resolution of the play, often played out with the unnecessary loss of life, especially of good guy characters. For example, the death of King Duncan, Banquo, Lady Macduff and family. External conflict. This can be a problem facing the hero as a result of the plot or a bad guy character. For example, the revenge to kill Macbeth by Macduff after his family was murdered by Macbeth. Internal conflict. The struggle the hero engages in which his or her fatal flaw In Hamlet's, uh, sorry, not Hamlet. In Macbeth's case, it's a moral dilemma that he's dealing with. Catharsis, the release of the audience's emotions through empathy with the characters. At a point when there's a resolution, everyone feels far better about it. Supernatural elements, the three witches and the ghost of Banco, for example. Lack of poetic justice. Things end poorly for everyone, including the good guys. However, in this case, Macbeth does get what he deserves in the theme of good versus evil, with good winning over evil ultimately. And a very, very important element of tragedy is comic relief. One of one or more humorous characters who will participate in scenes intended to lighten the mood. For example, in the play The Role of the Porter. The sad thing about a tragedy is that unfortunately you already know that the protagonist or hero will die in the end, unlike many films that you might see today. The full title of Macbeth is actually The Tragedy of Macbeth. The good king of Scotland is King Duncan, whom Macbeth in his ambition for the crown murders. His death symbolises the destruction of an order in Scotland that can be restored only when Duncan's line in the person of his eldest son Malcolm once more occupies the throne. Malcolm is King Duncan's eldest son and the heir to the throne of Scotland. After his father dies, Malcolm is afraid for his life and confused about his role. Instead of stepping in to become king, he leaves Scotland and goes to England, and he could be seen as a coward. Donald Bain is the youngest son of King Duncan and brother to Malcolm, the heir to the throne. Donald Bain flees to Ireland after the murder of his father for refuge. Once again, this could be seen as a cowardly action. Macbeth, who is currently the thane of Glams and Cordor, a highly regarded and respected general in the king's army, and adjectives such as brave, courageous, fearless, heroic and lion-hearted are bandied about. In the same scene where Duncan refers to Macbeth as a valiant cousin, the word valiant means similar things to the word brave, but it also suggests that he is fighting for good. <clears throat> Lady Macbeth is an example of pure ambition in the play. She and not her husband is the mastermind behind the plot to kill the king regicide so that she can become queen. Macduff, currently the Thane of Fife, is a legendary hero, plays a pivotal role in the play. He suspects Macbeth of regicide and eventually kills him in the final act. He can be seen as the avenging hero who helps save Scotland from Macbeth's tyranny in the play. Lady Macduff is the wife of Lord Macduff and the mother of an unnamed son and other children. 
Though Lady Macduff's appearance is limited, her role in the play is quite significant. Banquo is depicted as Macbeth's rival. The role of fellow plotter passed to Lady Macbeth. Like Macbeth, Banquo is often the, is, is open to human yearnings and desires. He is, for example, just as keen to hear what the witches have in store for him in Act 1. Fleance, Banquo's son who survives Macbeth's attempt to murder him. At the end of the play, Fleance's whereabouts are unknown. Presumably he may come to rule Scotland, fulfilling the witch's prophecy that Banquo's sons will sit on a Scottish throne. The Three Witches They play a key role in the play as they immediately bring a supernatural element which further, furthers the theme of fair is foul and foul is fair. Furthermore, they serve as the instruments of fate by delivering their prophecies to Macbeth, who is then motivated to pursue his ambition. And further characters that we come across during the course of the play are Lennox, Ross, Menteith, Angus, Caithness, who are all noblemen of Scotland, and then Seward, Earl of Northumberland, who is a general of the English forces, his young son Seward, and Seaton, an attendant to Macbeth, <coughs> and her Kate, Queen of the Witches. Plot Summary A brave, successful and highly regarded Scottish general named Macbeth receives a prophecy from three witches that one day he will become the King of Scotland. Consumed by ambition and spurred to action by his wife, Macbeth murders King Duck and takes a Scottish throne for himself. He is then racked with guilt and paranoia. Forced to commit more and more murders, Banquo, Macduff's family, to protect himself from enmity and suspicion, he soon becomes a tyrannical ruler. The bloodbath and consequent civil war swiftly take Macbeth and Lady Macbeth into the realms of madness and death. Malcolm, Duncan's son, becomes a rightful successor to the throne and order is restored. Part 2 of this presentation will be character analysis and part 3 will look at the themes such as ambition, good versus evil, the influence of supernatural forces, the contrast between appearance and reality, loyalty and guilt, and finally, key moments in the plot.